it's uh it's minus currently minus six it was minus nine ten overnight um and uh i've gone in the grow room this morning to turn the lights on and everything and we've had a leak um it's user error one of the threads on the uh, return pipe wasn't done up properly and luckily it wasn't a dramatic amount of water uh, but let's go and have a look um, yeah and we'll show you what happened all right cool okay so um we've got our spider farmer on to light up the scene for us and as I said, it was completely user error. Uh, the return pipe, which is this section here, uh, wasn't done up all the way. I came in and I tried to give it a turn and it went almost a quarter. So it just wasn't tight enough. There's a few drops of water. We've got a bit of paper under there now. Um, and there was a few drops coming out of this section here. And it had gone down and just pooled underneath the control uh, part in the center. I think we've probably lost about, I don't know, 200 milliliters of water, nothing more and nothing dramatic. But it's, it's a good thing as far as I'm concerned because it highlights the importance of testing this equipment. The 60 liters of water in here and if we had have left it any longer than we had, uh, we could be in a flooded situation and there's lots of power and appliances and that wouldn't be good. Um, later in the video, we're going to show you uh, a product that we have that we've been testing that can help us with that. Um, so yeah, stay to the end and we'll, we'll show you how to set that up. So yeah, we can avoid this. Okay. So we're going to fix this leak. Um, Groverilla hydroponics have designed this, so it's nice easy to do. This is a separate piece. Unplugged it from the pump. Um, and I'm going to set this bit back onto this T-junction here. And it's important to note that this moves up and down as the thread gets tighter. I'm gonna push it right to the top so the gasket sits right on this bit and that should hopefully give us a good seal. Hold it steady there and then take that first thread. And I'm going to, just gonna do this as tight as I can. Um, before this wasn't as tight as it could be. And I think that was where our problem was. I'll check that again in a minute. I'm just gonna put this other, other end onto the pump. And then give it a wiggle. As I say, I'm gonna check this again now and then we'll wait a little minute and check it again a bit later as well. And I'm also gonna get Christian to give it a turn, see if he can get any more out of it. I've got wet hands now. Yeah, a little movement there. Okay. One thing I didn't say before uh, when I was adding this uh, thread back on is that it's really important this valve is closed. This is stopping the water from going anywhere and it means you can remove this safely without anything emptying onto the floor. If this was open and we took this off, water would come out of there uh, from the other buckets. So we fixed our leak. We've got the pump running in here. We're gonna leave that running for a little while. And in the meantime, we're gonna deal with our temperature. Uh, the water's very cold at the moment. Um, you can go anywhere between 18 and 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're going to go in the lower range. Um, the lower the temperature of the water, the higher dissolved oxygen you get. And that's beneficial for root development in lots of different plants. Uh, we have tomatoes in here and we're just going to have to see. So let's put this in, have our power running out with the power for the pump. Um, get him in there and we'll plug that in and let it come up to temperature. And then we're nearly ready to transfer our seeds. Right, so we have our nutrients in, um, we've got a tripart from Terra Aquatica. 
uh, mixed in with the 60 litre capacity of the 41S from Grow Rilla Hydroponics and we're finally going to transplant our seedlings. Um, the rock wall is nice and soaked and we've also soaked our clay pebbles from Vitalink um, just to get any debris off them and also to they retain like a nice bit of water. Uh, we haven't got any roots on our plants yet so that's necessary for them to develop. So place a little rock wall in and um, I'm just going to put a few around, around the outside of it. Um, as these haven't got any roots we're going to top feed them for the next little while until they start to develop roots. Uh, so we've mixed up a smaller batch of nutrients as well and we'll just come in uh, every day or every other day and, and make sure they're moist and being fed properly. I think that's pretty good. We'll move on to the next one and then we'll come back and, and put a bit more clay pebbles on top if we need to. Okay, so I'm just labeling these so we know what they are. And as I said before, we're gonna to have to give these guys a little top feed because they're not all producing roots. The kale actually has a little root popping out the bottom and hopefully that will go after the water underneath as the air stones bubble down there. Um, yeah, they're finally in. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, we had a leak and we've been testing this new bit of kit that we've got in um, which detects water leaks and it's from Needis. It's a smart product and connects over Wi-Fi and it has a siren inside it and it also sends a notification to your phone and you can push out to email as well if you want. Um, I'll just show you here. I'll lick the top tips of my fingers and put them on the connectors here. So that will just uh, go off if there's water and I'm going to put it underneath where we had the leak this morning and um, yeah it'll let me know if there's any more water coming out. Hopefully not, fingers crossed. So yeah, I'll put it down there. Oh, maybe in the centre here. 